This video is brought to you by the Ground School Academy, the number one rated online ground school. With over 320 full HD videos that are iPad and mobile friendly, plus live webinars. We're so confident you'll learn more in our course that if you don't pass your check ride, we'll pay for it. Click below to become a member today. Hey everybody, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and today I'm answering a question that a lot of you guys have asked. James, a uh, online ground school member, asked it most recently and that is how the heck do I lean the mixture? And I'll tell you, this is a question I had going on even as an instrument and commercial rated pilot. So don't feel like you're behind the eight ball if that mixture knob confuses you. And honestly, to me, the mixture was intimidating. My brain associated that mixture knob with, that's how I turn the engine off. So why on earth would I want to be playing with that, you know, while I'm flying? It just didn't make sense to me. I was very, it was an intimidating thing to do. I didn't want that engine to quit in flight. That's what I was most worried about. But really, leaning that mixture is such an important aspect of your performance. So let's, before I show you how to lean, let's talk a little bit about why we lean. And the real primary reason that we lean is for what the FAA calls satisfactory engine operation. I'm talking 3,000 feet plus is usually what's recommended. Now you guys have to realize that in your POH, you see all these great numbers for cruise, great fuel burn, great true air speed, but you have to realize that those numbers are calibrated assuming you leaned that engine properly. If you're still running that thing full rich, you're not going to get your maximum, you know, your best fuel burn or your best true air speed, really just your best performance in general. So fuel burn is really a secondary thing. A lot of times people think, oh, I lean the mixture to save gas. Yeah, you do, but that's secondary to the big picture, the primary thing, which is satisfactory uh, engine performance. Now let's talk about some scenarios where I'd want you to be full rich or actually um, lean it. So some situations to be full rich would be during takeoff. And I have an asterisk next to that because during takeoff, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, Denver on a 90 degree day. I'm talking full rich, assuming density altitude is 5,000 feet or less. Uh, you know, let's say above that, you're gonna have to consult your POH, um, you know, for that sort of stuff. We're talking just, uh, you know, density altitude of 5,000 feet and below uh, for that. Uh, during your flight maneuvers is another time that you want to be full rich, okay? You want to have that performance, especially when you're doing things like stalls and slow flight. And obviously, if the engine is getting too hot, it's a great way to cool the engine down. Some situations where you want to lean are on taxi. You can debate this all day long, but I can tell you, as a flight instructor, as an aircraft owner, your spark plugs will last longer if you lean that engine on taxi. There's no need to run full rich and be pumping all that fuel and doing what I call loading up uh, those cylinders and those plugs uh, where you're gonna have fuel that's just gonna not burn. You could start engine fires that way. Uh, you're certainly gonna cause some problems during run-up. Uh, if you're chronically having to um, you know, burn off a spark plug, uh, you know, during your run-up or you're running up, leaning out and everything else, um, you know, leaning on taxi is gonna save you a ton. And I'm a big fan of 3,000 feet and above, um, I'm going to end up leaning. So, uh, last thing I'll kind of share with you how we're gonna do this is this. Um, rich of peak or lean of peak? Uh, a, a huge topic you can debate, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna debunk this real quick here. You do not want to operate lean of peak in a carbureted engine. It's just a carburetor cannot, you know, successfully regulate uh, how much fuel is traveling to each cylinder. Carburetor just cannot do it as well, should I say, as a fuel injected aircraft. So lean of peak in carbureted aircraft is just a no-no. Really, lean of peak is a no-no unless you're fuel injected and you've got an EGT and you can monitor this sort of stuff. Other than that, you want to operate what I call, or what is called, rich of peak. And I'm going to show you that um, in this next clip here. So getting it to rich of peak, I want you to watch this. Let's watch the tachometer really quick. 
I'm going to begin leaning out the mixture. I want you to watch that tachometer really, really close. It's like at 2350, almost 24. And I'm going to begin to lean this airplane out. Okay, just slowly lean it out and watch. Watch those RPMs. Notice how they're actually climbing. I'm leaning out and those RPMs are actually climbing in this case. Okay, I'll lean it out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And right there, did you see that? Right there, it climbed to the max. And now, if anything, it's, it's dropping, it's decreasing. You want to lean it out to rich of peak. When you lean it out, at these high altitudes, you are increasing aircraft performance. So you want to lean it out to reach a peak. Now, if I continue to lean it out, what's going to happen? Well, those RPMs are going to continue to drop to eventually where, like that, the engine is going to quit. Now, I put that mixture back in and it goes right back to what would be really a, a very, very lean of peak. I'm not giving that engine enough fuel to properly perform. That's why this whole lean it out until the engine gets rough and almost quits, then screw it in three turns. You know, those, do those strategies work? Well, they'll get you close, but it's a little scary. I'm not a big fan of bringing that engine back to anywhere where it's going to have a problem like that. Um, now, having an EGT gauge, if you know using your POH, your peak EGT, that makes life a lot easier. However, you got to remember that's going to vary from altitude to altitude, from temperature to temperature. That sort of stuff is going to change. I'm a big fan of using the tachometer because you know what? Honestly, not a lot of us all have uh, an EGT and the ability to actually use that EGT. So what I recommend is leaning that mixture out till you get an increase in performance, which will happen earlier than you think. Bring it all the way out to that increase in performance stabilizes or maybe it's a slight decrease and work to get to that maximum point of stabilization to get your maximum aircraft performance. And that is how you properly lean an airplane. Okay guys, so I hope you learned a ton about leaning your mixture. Next time on a long cross country flight, anytime you're above 3,000 feet, work on getting that aircraft to rich of peak. You're gonna increase your performance, save some fuel as your secondary byproduct, and uh, get there certainly more efficiently and effectively. So guys, I know you're gonna have some questions about this, so do me a favor, on m08.com, go ahead and scroll down underneath this video and uh, leave me a comment and you know you'll get a reply from me. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to reach out and hit that Ask Jason a Question button at the top of m08.com and ask me your questions. And who knows, you just might get a video made. So with that, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.